The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Absence makes the heart grow fonder is a popular phrase, but by no means an infallible prescription for every would-be lover. But there are times when absence cannot be helped. And with the young especially, whose minds are still impressionable, such separations can be fatal. Janie, I want you to say it again. I, I've already said it. But look me in the eye and say it again. I don't love you anymore, Andy. You don't mean that. Oh, I should have written you, but... No, I'm glad you didn't. Why? You made this trip all for nothing. No. <laughs> Give me the chance to see you again. For the last time. No. I know exactly what's happened, Janie. And it's not for the last time. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Girl He Left Behind, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger and stars Anne Williams. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It was Goethe who observed that only in first love are our senses engaged to their fullest. And thereafter, love, like anything repeatable, is no longer of the keenest pitch. Yet, even in the exhilarating grip of first love, it can seem a fearful thing to follow blindly where the heart leads. For its path is swift, full of turnings, and leads we know not where. Janie, is that you? Yes, Mother. How was your day at the hospital? Oh, we're still understaffed. Oh, this heat. Mother, is that fresh lemonade? It is. Made especially for my one and only favorite daughter. Oh. Now, you sit down, put up your feet, and let me wait on you. Oh, Mother, this is heaven. <laughs> I don't know why you insist on staying on at that state sanatorium. They can't even afford air conditioning. Oh, you know Dr. Harper needs me. Well, you've learned everything he has to teach you. You ought to move on. Now, that wouldn't be fair. Well, you've got to think of yourself first, dear. Do you know what your horoscope says for this month? Oh, Mother, you know I don't believe in that stuff. Well, still, sometimes it's nice to know what the future has in store for you, especially when you're tired. <laughs> All right, what does my horoscope say? Well, that within the next four weeks, there's going to be a major change in your life. Now, what could that be except a new and better job? Well, I'm sure I don't know. <laughs> was there any mail today? Oh, I suppose there was. What do you mean, you suppose? Oh, Mother. Well, you... You got a letter from Andy. That's what I thought. <laughs> it's been opened. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but the mail comes so early, I just couldn't wait. This is my private life. Well, it affects me, too. I'm 23 years old. I'm a practical nurse. I earn my own living. Exactly. Which is why you're much too good for that Andy. What kind of a future does a private in the army have, anyway? Well, now, that's only for two years. <laughs> and then what? He's got no ambition that I can tell and no direction. Oh. I know. He's asked for a full week's leave. He wants to drive up to see you. He writes that he has something important he wants to ask me. Mm. And we both know what that is. Well, what are you going to say? Oh, I don't know. I hadn't expected this. Do. Do you love him? We've known each other so long. You don't sound very convincing. Oh, Mother. All men can't be like Father, can they? All men have the potential to be like your father. Irresponsible, self-centered, and untraceable. But Andy's different. Is he? You have no idea how sweet he can be. <laughs> Janie, 
He's been in basic training for almost four months. He's lonely and homesick, and he's just out to make the most of his first big leave. Did he ever talk about marriage before he left? Yes. Oh, well, I... Uh... I certainly don't mean to interfere in this uh, silver screen romance. It's, it's your life. Put yourself in that boy's hands if that's what you wish. If you really trust him. Excuse me, Sergeant. Uh, what is it, Nelson? No, 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 don't tell me. Let me guess. Well, I was uh, just wondering... If um, your seven-day pass was granted, it's only the third time today you've bugged me. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... What is it, a girl? Uh, well, y y yes, sir. How, the, how did you know? Nelson, I've been training recruits for ten years. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you to marry me. Th that is it. Relax. If I get the... You got the pass. Oh, really? Gee, Sarge, thanks. You, hey, you want to see a picture? Do I have a choice? Well, No. No, I didn't think so. Hey, she's very nice looking. <laughs> hey, she is a nice looking kid. Well, uh, your girl, huh? Oh, yeah. Now, her name's Janie. She's a nurse. How'd you meet? By accident? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that wasn't worthy of me. Sergeant, I uh, want to show you something else. This is the ring you're going to give her? What are you, rich? How'd you afford it? I spent every cent I had on it. But it's like a little flower. Well, the, the little blue stone in the center, that's a, a, a capuchon sapphire. A, and the petals are made of diamond chips. This girl's really something, huh? Well, we've known each other ever since, well, we were in junior high school. And she loves you? Yes, sir. You sure? I know. A lot of guys get this same idea after they've been in the service a few months. And a lot of times, well, the girls, they just don't... No longer feel the same way. Yeah, well, I, I don't agree, sir. I, I don't believe people change. And I, I mean, not really. Not not deep down inside. I know Janie was in love with me before I left. And I know she's still in love with me now. Just a minute. Janie. Andy? Oh, oh gosh, I've missed you. Oh, Janie. It's been a long time. What's the matter? But, oh, this haircut. I, uh, I guess I uh, do look kind of different. <laughs> You're almost bald. Oh. Gee, you sure won a lot of medals. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, they're for sharpshooting. Now, this one here is for pistol. This one's for rifle. But I'm the best marksman in the company. That's swell. Uh, did you get my letter? Yes. I was going to write you. Well, that, that's okay. I'm I'm here. <laughs> Can't I come in? Oh, oh yes. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Oh, well, it's been so hot. I, I guess where you are... Well, you, you know, there's... Uh, something I want to ask you. Andy, uh, before you say anything... Aren't, aren't we alone? Oh, uh, well, well, yes. Uh, Mother's gone to her bridge club. Janie, you know how we feel about each other. Yes. Look, I've... I've I've never been good with words, so I'll... I'll just give you this. A ring? You knew that's what I was talking about in the letter, didn't you? I... I just didn't think you'd have already bought... Well, the first weekend pass I got, I, I spent it all in Atlanta looking for something that would be, y you know, just right. It's pretty, huh? Uh, now, that, that's your favorite shade of blue. Oh, it's lovely, Andy. But... It's too much. It's too sudden. I, I can't accept it. What? I should have written. Janie, what? What's the matter? I'm, I'm not ready for marriage, Andy. Well, we don't have to get married right away. No, Andy. I, I don't know if I'll ever be ready. I'm, I'm just frightened. That's all. It's your mother, isn't it? What? Your mother's done this to you. Done what? Scared you. Oh, no. She doesn't like me. She never has. She thinks I've got no future. And you know why? Because my future's with you, Janie. And she won't accept that. She can't let you go. No, that's not true. You've got to get away from her and live your own life. 
We've had this talk a hundred times. Let's let's take the plunge and see where we are when the smoke clears. I can't. Jane, you've got to stop being such a shrinking violet. Your problem is you want time to stand still. You've got to stop trying to pretend you're still Mama's little girl. I don't. I don't pretend that. Here, here's your ring back. No, you keep it. Oh, I can't. I bought it for you. I'd never give it to anyone else. Besides, I want you to have something you can always remember me by. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, go back to the base, I guess. Oh, I've spoiled your week, haven't I? My week? Uh, Janie, if, um... Uh, if ever there's anything I can do for you, I, I know you haven't had much to count on from men in your life, but you can count on me, Janie. Always. Mother, I'm home. Mother. I'm right here, Janie. Oh. Well, why don't you have a light on? I'm sorry I had to work late, Mother. What's the matter? I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Bad? About Andy. What's happened? Uh, there's been an accident. Andy was killed. Andy's dead? Well, it was while he was driving back to the base. He only had a few miles to go when it happened. Oh, no. Sit down, dear. I'll, I'll bring you something. Mother, are you sure? How do you know? Well, his commanding officer called this afternoon. Well, why did he call us? Well, Andy named you the beneficiary of his insurance policy. Money? Oh, I can't take that. Well, darling, let's not talk about it now. Come, sit down. Oh, no, he can't be dead. Oh, Mother... It's my fault. You can't blame yourself. You had nothing to do with it. But I did. He'd still be here now if I hadn't said no to him. Here, darling, I'll draw a nice bath for you. Oh, don't bother. Janie, where are you going? Janie! Janie. Janie, please let me come in. Don't shut me out. Yes, Mother, you can come in. Darling, what are you doing? What? What's that you're wearing? It's the ring he gave me. Oh. Well, I, I think that's a, a nice gesture. I'm going to wear it forever. What? But you aren't engaged to him. No. But I am now. But he's dead. I was wrong to refuse him. I never should have listened to you. Me? You turned me against... Oh, that is absolutely not true. I pointed out certain facts, that's all. But the choice I left entirely up to you. Oh, I know. I'm sorry, Mother. I, I have no one to blame but myself. But you mustn't do that either. <gasps> oh, Janie, well, what happened? The ring. Hmm? It, it twisted around on my finger all by itself, like, like it was trying to come off. Well, look, you, you, you've cut yourself. Take it off at once. No. No, I'll never take it off. I don't care what happened. No, Andy wanted me to have this, and I'm... I'm going to wear it forever. It is a natural desire to grieve for the departed, for it satisfies something in us. But does it satisfy the dead? No one has ever thought to ask them how they feel. Perhaps because of the conventional assumption that the dead are no longer with us. But there are times when the dead refuse to play their customary passive role. Is this one of those times? And if so, just what does the spirit of Andy Nelson have in mind for the girl who jilted him? That we won't know until I return with Act Two. How much power do the dead have? over the living. Much of the dead's influence is, of course, in our own minds, as sorrow or guilt, or a host of other emotions that continue to churn long after the grass is on the grave. But who says the dead are any more willing or able to call it a day 
than we are. Mrs. Raymond? Oh, Dr. Harper. I'm so glad you were able to stop by. Oh, please, come in. I, uh, <clears throat> we missed Janie at the hospital today. Is she ill? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, where is she now? In her room, taking a nap. The poor girl hasn't had a decent night's sleep since that boy's death. Well, Janie mentioned that. He was a boyfriend? Oh, in a way, I suppose. They hadn't seen each other in months. Now it's as if he were deliberately trying to torment her. I'm sure Janie feels badly about what happened. Oh, it's not just depression, Doctor. There's definitely some force working on her. Hmm? How do you mean? Well, something follows her about. There's a terror that comes into her eyes. Well, to tell you the truth, Mrs. Raymond, I hadn't really noticed it. But you work with her 12 hours a day. I've seen nothing of the nature you describe, only a general depression. Well, are you saying I'm, I'm imagining all this? Can you tell me more specifically what's been happening? Well, for one thing, she has a recurring dream. Well, there's nothing unusual in that. But she insists it isn't a dream at all, that it actually happens. And then there's the ring. What ring? Oh, you must have noticed that, Doctor. It's on the fourth finger of her left hand, the engagement finger. She insists on wearing it, even though she... Now, just a moment, Mrs. Raymond. Tell me about the dream first. What happens? Oh, dear. Is that Jane? Yes, come quickly. Oh, yes. This is what happens every time she tries to sleep. Oh, Janie. Oh, Janie. Oh, baby, don't worry. Mama's here, darling. Oh. Mama ain't having a chance. That's all right, dearest. Who's that? Hello, Janie. Oh, Dr. Hart. Mm. Why are you here? Well, your mother asked me to come by. Oh, Mother, please don't fight. But look at you. you you're perspiring. You had that dream again, didn't you? It's not a dream. The room really does change. Uh, Janie, would you tell me what happens? Uh, Andy comes to see me. Andy is the boy who was killed? Yes. Mm. I know it's real because it, everything changes. The room, it, it becomes completely white. The, the windows and doors disappear. There's no way out. And then suddenly Andy's here, right next to me. And? He holds out his hand. What does he want? He wants that ring she insists on wearing, and I think she ought to give it to him. Uh, Mrs. Raymond, please. Janie? He wants the ring. And when I refuse to give it back, he tries to grab it off. And then I scream. And the room changes back and Andy vanishes? Yes. But it's not a dream, I swear. Why won't you give him the ring? Because I promised him I'd wear it forever. Why? He asked me to marry him the night before he was killed. I said no. Now he's dead. Uh, may I see your hand? Yes. Oh, oh it hurts. <laughs> no wonder. Have you looked at your finger? What's wrong with her finger? Oh, it's covered with abrasions. Why haven't you taken care of these wounds, Janie? Oh, I don't blame him. Not after the way I treated him. Uh, Mrs. Raymond, would you bring me my bag? I left it out by the front door. Yes, Doctor. Right away. Janie? I want you to remove that ring. But I can't. Your finger's already becoming infected. Now, come on, give me the ring. I'll put it here on your bureau where you can see it. Okay. Ooh. Ah, good Lord, it's all twisted out of shape. I told you, Andy tries to wrench it off. Andy did nothing. You've done this to yourself. As a nurse, you ought to know better. Yes, sir. You blame yourself for Andy's death, don't you? Yes. Obviously, these lacerations are a form of atonement. You commit them unconsciously while you're asleep. Oh, Doctor, here, here's your bag. Oh, thank you. But I'm not asleep. Janie, you've seen cases like this at the sanatorium. You, you think I'm going crazy? 
No, I think you're overwrought. Doctor, can't you just give her some medicine? I think it might be better if we gave her a complete physical examination and ran a few other tests. You you mean mental tests? Well, yes. You do think I'm crazy, don't you, Janie? No, Janie. At this point, I'm not sure what to think, except to hope that whatever it is will pass with time. That sedative should allow her to get a decent night's rest, Mrs. Raymond. If you ask me, that's half the problem right there. Oh. Exhaustion. You you didn't know Andy Nelson, Doctor. He seemed like just another ingenuous young man. But his aura was bright red. His aura? The light field that surrounds each of us. It can only be detected by the practiced eye, and its color indicates our true personality. There was a deep vein of vindictive spite in that boy's soul. I knew he hated me. You believe in the supernatural? Well, you saw that ring yourself. Janie hasn't the strength to twist it the way it was. She might in a moment of extreme anguish. You mean she might deliberately be deceiving me? Deceiving herself as well, Mrs. Raymond. And it's not going to help matters much if you keep talking about ghosts. Janie obviously puts great store by what you say. Oh, you think she does? Really? The point is, she's suggestible. So don't. <laughs> Good day, Mrs. Raymond. Oh, and uh, don't keep her home from the hospital anymore. The distraction of her work is probably the best thing for her right now. Well, Doctor... How did you know it was I who insisted she stay home? What's the matter, dear? Is the veal not done well enough? Mother, please. What? Please stop looking at me like that. Like what? Just stop looking at me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what made me speak to you like that. Oh, darling, soon this will all be over. Everything will be like it was before. Won't it, sweetheart? Yes, Mother. I'm sorry. <gasps> what on earth was that? I don't know. It, it sounded like it came from your room. Oh, it's your bureau. It's fallen over. The ring. Where's the ring? What? It was on top of the bureau. It's gone. Oh, well, it must be here on the floor somewhere. Where is it, Mother? What? Where did you hide it? I didn't touch it. How can we go on living together if there's nothing but suspicion between us? The suspicion, young lady, seems to be all on your side. You never wanted me to keep that ring. You didn't want me to have anything that would remind me of Andy. Who well, are then? And how did I manage to knock over the bureau? Can you answer me that? I... I think you have powers, Mother. Powers? What kind of powers? You have power over me. Oh, don't be silly. You do. Your obsession with witchcraft. Witchcraft? Well, with horoscopes and auras and... and... And the occult. Oh, that's not witchcraft. You're using your powers to control me. Janie, I promise you I had nothing to do with the disappearance of Andy's ring. Well, I think you did. It's not Andy's ghost at all. It's it's you trying to make me believe it is. Trying to, to turn me against him. Oh, what cause have I ever given you to speak to me in that, that tone of voice? You are a manipulative, selfish, and a, a deeply evil woman. But you'll never make me forget Andy. Never! <laughs> Mrs. Raymond, I'm sure Jamie's actions are the result of nothing more than nerves. Yes, but what about that bureau? We were in the living room and it fell over. And the ring just disappeared altogether. Well, science has no satisfactory explanation for such phenomena, but it's by no means a rare occurrence. Oh. Why is she so bitter towards me? The tests are almost complete. There seems to be nothing wrong with her physically, and I'll have the psychological data fully analyzed by tomorrow afternoon. But I think we're going to find only an overactive imagination fueled by guilt. Excuse me for a moment. Uh, Dr. Harper? Oh, Jimmy, what is it? Uh, can I speak to you a moment, sir? Uh, yes, uh, this is Mrs. Raymond. This is Jimmy Wood, one of our interns. Y you're Janie's mother? Yes. Why, has something happened to her? 
Well... What? What is it? She's in the dining room. There she is. Huh. Janie? Janie, can you hear me? Yes. Janie, what happened? I heard him. What do you mean? Heard who? Andy. I heard his voice. He spoke to me. Well, she was going through the cafeteria line when suddenly she dropped her tray and went into a trance. He spoke to me. Mm, what did he say? Can you forget me? A hallucination. No. Well, several other people also claimed they heard the voice. Who? Well, uh, s some of the patients. Uh, the patients in this ward are all mentally disturbed and highly suggestible. I think we can discount what they say, don't you, Jimmy? This time I was wide awake. I know I wasn't dreaming. and I heard his voice. Oh, Janie, Janie, listen to me. We're going to do everything that's necessary to help you. I don't think you can help me, Mother. I don't think anyone can ever help me again. Set me like a seal upon thy heart. Love is as strong as death, says the poet. At this moment, Andy seems more like a vice than a seal on Janie's heart. And he sits there with what it seems could hardly be called love. In life, he was an ingenuous enough fellow. Could he be so changed in death? Well, death is often compared to sleep. And we all know our dreams are notoriously amoral. So perhaps the dead are likewise bereft of scruple. And if that is so... Janie Raymond might not be in for a very pleasant time. I shall return in a moment with our final act. Andy's spirit seems determined to exact satisfaction from the tormented Janie. But just what kind of satisfaction is he seeking? He's been rather vague about what it is he would like, which is hardly encouraging. For we all know if a spirit walks abroad, it is because it is unsettled. And it will not return to the grave until it has found peace. Mother? Oh, yes, dear. I'm right here. Where am I? At home. Where? Janie, what's the matter? You're, you're in your own room. I... I don't know. For a minute it looked... Strange. Strange. Like a place I'd never been before. Oh, it must have been the effects of the sedative that Dr. Harper gave you at the hospital. Dr. Harper wanted to keep you at the hospital. Why didn't you let him? I told him the best place for you was right in your own bed. No, I'm, I'm scared. There's nothing to worry about now. You're with me, dear. You're safe. Baby, uh, do, do you think I'm going crazy? Oh, hush. <laughs> what if it's true? It's not true. It's simply not possible. You're my daughter, my precious one and only. I see his face. I, I hear his voice. He, he pursues me. I'm, I'm so tired I can barely stand up but I'm scared to close my eyes because I know he'll be there. Well, you can rest now, sweetheart. <laughs> now, Dr. Harper says he'll have the results of all these tests tomorrow. Oh, those tests won't show anything. They can't show what's happening. Nothing can, no one. No one, I'm alone. I'm completely alone. None of you can do anything. Janie, darling, you're distressed. I want you to lie back. Oh, Mother. Mother, your voice feels so good. Please forgive me. I didn't mean what I said. Oh, it's all right, dear. Say anything you want. It doesn't matter. Oh, you are a good person. I'm sorry about all those terrible things I said before. About, about you being wicked and evil. Oh, you're a saint to put up with me. Shh. 
Now, you know you're a very lucky girl. Why? Well, look how Andy's spirit is behaving. Showing his true colors, if you ask me. He's being petty and vindictive. He's nothing but but a jealous ghost. Oh, no, it's just not like him. I almost feel like I'm beginning to hate him. Oh, I don't think that's necessary. But it does seem obvious he, he doesn't love you very much. Think if you'd accepted his proposal. Think if you'd actually been married. That would have been a fine time to discover the truth. Mother? Yes, dear. Maybe... Maybe I should move out. What? Well, if, if Andy is going to make my life miserable, I... I don't want you subjected to it. Why, I, I'm sure that's exactly what he'd like. We shouldn't give him the satisfaction. We must stand together and conquer him. But what can we do? Well, I, I know you've never had the, the faith that I do, but perhaps if you'd make the effort... What do you mean? <sighs> Darling, I want you to come with me tomorrow morning to Madame Taj's. You mean that old woman witch you go to? Oh, she's not a witch, Janie. She's a medium, a clairvoyant. She's a person of extraordinary powers. But I'm supposed to see Dr. Harper tomorrow. Oh, that's not till the afternoon. Besides, I think you're quite right. What we're dealing with here is far beyond the limited ken of medical science. Madame is highly skilled at contacting the spirits of the departed. You mean she could talk directly to Andy? Yes. Uh, and you think she could make Andy stop tormenting me? Oh, quite possibly. You see, Janie... I can help you. Who knows? If you came to respect Madame as I do, it might... might bring us closer together than ever. Well, come on in. Don't be afraid. Mother, this looks just like a normal person's house. Of course. Mediums aren't any different from you or me. They're simply endowed with unique powers which they have disciplined. There's no reason not to act perfectly normal. Sh shouldn't you have knocked before we came in? No need. Madame knows who it is. Hello, Mrs. Raymond. Ah, and this is your daughter, Janie, is it not? Uh, how do you do? I believe the question is, how do you do? Your mother has explained to me the reason why you are here. Yes, I... Uh... Will you come this way, please? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, I am sorry, Mrs. Raymond, but you know how I work. I must be with your daughter alone. You're skeptical, aren't you? Well, I... Uh... It's all right. Just... Don't waste energy feeling apologetic. Your concentration will be needed elsewhere. Please be seated. What are you going to do? Your mother explained as much of the problem as I needed to know. You are troubled by the spirit of a departed friend? Uh, he was my boyfriend. Oh, well, I can definitely sense another presence in the room. You can it arrived within moments after we entered. Why, well, this is most strange. What? Your mother had led me to believe that this was an evil spirit. But the pulse I feel from it is quite calm. I see nothing but white light. Well, what does that mean? That he intends no harm. Well, then why... Oh, shh, shh, he... He is weeping. Crying? Yes, but not in remorse. The sensations I am receiving are those of sadness. Tell me, Janie, in what ways has this spirit made itself known to you? It took away a ring and it said I could keep forever. Oh, oh, what is it? There above your head. It's his face. Just like yesterday at the hospital. Yes, I see it. Do you? Then I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm... Janie? It's, it's gone now. Oh, he spoke to you, didn't he? Yes. 
What did he say? Same thing he said yesterday. Can you forget me? You see, he taunts me. You say that in life, this boy loved you? Oh, I thought he did. But I guess Mother was right about men. Oh, all the symptoms are those of a spirit seeking revenge. Yet there is no trace of hatred, only sorrow. What other explanation could there be for his actions? I don't know. You must think, girl. Nothing is done without cause. Whatever he is doing, he is definitely doing with affection. And since that is the emotion the two of you shared in life, if you look deeply enough into yourself, you will find the meaning. Well, what? You haven't said a word since we left Madame's. Oh, uh, I thought maybe I wasn't supposed to talk about it. You can talk to me. Obviously, something happened that was food for thought. Madame Taj didn't have any answers, if that's what you're asking. But what happened? Was she able to contact Andy's spirit? Yes. And? Mother, I don't know. There was nothing conclusive. Oh, here's the bus. But, Jane. But can we just not talk about it? Good afternoon, Jenny. Mrs. Raymond. Good afternoon, Dr. Harper. Have a pleasure to be seen. Oh, thank you. Well, as I suspected, Janie, there's nothing seriously wrong. Physically, you're in perfect health. <laughs> and and mentally? And essentially, she's quite sound. I am? You were traumatized by Andy's death, that's all. The trance you went into yesterday when he told you not to forget him... Oh, those weren't his exact words. No, the exact words don't matter. The point is, it was clearly self-induced, just as the lacerations with the ring were self-induced. Andy isn't hounding you, Janie. You're hounding yourself. If you can stop blaming yourself for his death, I predict you'd be fully recovered within a day or two. But how can I control my feelings? Well, maybe this will help. Well, what is it? A report of the officer who was at the scene of the accident. Uh, apparently, there was another car involved. Another car? Operated by a man who had been drinking heavily. He veered into Andy's lane. A witness said Andy never had a chance. No one would have. But I wasn't responsible? No. Andy has no hold over you whatsoever. None. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Janie, what is it? <laughs> Didn't you hear what the doctor said? <laughs> I swear, I don't understand you at all. Janie, where are you going? Here's the bus stop. I think I'll walk home. Oh, well, it's a nice day. Of course. Why not? I mean, I want to walk home alone. Oh. Dr. Harper was wrong about one thing, Mother. Andy has been with me. Every moment since he died. I know that. Dr. Harper is well-intentioned, but he's a man of limited vision. But it's only now I realize why. Well, what do you mean? He appeared to me again at, at Madame Taj's. And he spoke the same words as before. Can you forget me? Dr. Harper was wrong about that, too. The exact words do matter. And he wasn't trying to punish me. He... He was asking me to forget him. Oh, well, the boy had more sense than I thought. That's why he took his ring away. He was telling me not to cling to him, but to, to go out and live my life. But you are living your life. No, Mother, not yet. Not my own life. But I'm going to start. Oh, you mean you want to start seeing more young men? I'm going to move out, Mother. Move out? 
Yes. You hate me, don't you? No, Mother. I don't hate you. I'm just going to your house to pack my things. How hard it can be to know our own minds when those who have our best interests at heart smother us with their affection. For where is the blame in love? Yet, love, as Plato said, is need. And in our need, we are often less than perfect. But then, to complete the circuit of our reasoning on an irrational subject, is it not our very imperfections which often make us lovable? I shall return in a moment with a final word. Was it really Andy's spirit which prodded Janie Raymond out of the womb? Or were the signs which beset her the externalization of her own deepest instincts? In a way, it hardly matters. The important thing was, it was necessary. For either we grow or we die. Our cast included Ann Williams, Jack Grimes, Bryna Rayburn, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.